For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. Sunday afternoon, December the 29th, 1991. Dr. Bill Null of Salina, Kansas, is the speaker of the afternoon. This is the Midwinter Family Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Today I want to talk to you about uh, a little about walking in spirit a little bit. And I want to go over uh, some basic concepts, and then we would uh, look at some other scriptures. But I, I, the, uh, this is uh, extremely basic, and I'm sure that most of you have know most of this, but uh, nevertheless, I thought that uh, it would be wise to go through it. You know that God made you a free moral agent, and that you were able to choose what you wanted to do. At least he made Adam that way. And when Adam fell, he lost his free moral choice. Let's open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. And here Paul is writing a letter to the Ephesians, and he says... And you, Ephesians, he has made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children are raw, just as the others. Now, that word nature there means that you were born that way. That's the same word that Paul used when uh, he said we were by nature Jews or Gentiles, I mean uh, Hebrews. We were born that way. Not Gentile sinners, but we were born Hebrews. And so here we say, he says we were by nature born children of raw. That meant that... Uh, You didn't have a right to choose. The devil controls you through the lust of your flesh. But thank God, when Jesus was hung on the cross, his blood was shed for the remission of all of our sins. But something else happened. I want you to open your Bibles to Romans 6. It says here, Knowing this, that I, old man, Now, this term old man Paul uses in several different ways. The lust of the flesh, the old man. He said, Our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. That word done away with is rendered inoperative, so that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Before Christ died, before you were saved, you were permanently plugged in to the flesh. And the flesh and the body of sin was operative. Your old man was operative in your body. And the old man liked to sin. And you really didn't have any choice about it. As a matter of fact, it was a law. If you look at Romans 8, we'll keep your finger in Romans 6 and go over to Romans 8 for a minute. Chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 8, verse 2, the law of the, of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The body of sin. Now, these aren't sins that you commit. This is the sin principle, the thing that manufactures the sin. I spoke yesterday of the, of the, of the alcohol in the bars. You get rid of all of them. But they got these factories that make it and put it back in the bars. Here you had a sin factory in you called the body of sin. And this was rendered inoperative. The law of sin was rendered inoperative. You know, what is a law? A law is something that's going to happen. 
I can hold these keys up. If I turn these keys loose, the law of gravity says they will fall. Now, I can defy the law of gravity with my will. I can hold it up. But after about 12 hours, my hand is going to get tired. And when it finally quits, they still fall. And that's the way the law of sin was in your life. You could stand against it, you could stand against it, but eventually you would get tired and you would yield and it would take its toll on your life. But praise God, that law of sin, that body of sin, no longer operates in your life. It doesn't have to operate. You can choose for it not to. It's been rendered inoperative. Let's turn over to verse 12. Sick Romans 6.12 or 11. It says, Likewise you also reckon yourselves dead to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does that mean? That means that you can tell sin that you are dead to it. That when it rises up in your body, you can say no. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lust. Whew. Well, let's look at Ephesians. Let's turn over quick to Ephesians 4.24 and see what Ephesians says about the lust of the flesh. And here Paul is talking to the Ephesians. He says that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The lust of the flesh are deceitful. They will argue with you. They will plead with you. They will tell you to be reasonable. Let's be reasonable. Do you know the devil is a very logical and reasonable fellow? He says, let's be reasonable about this. Oh, come on now. You're not going to do that and embarrass me like that. Well, what is everybody going to think of you? Come on now. Let's be reasonable. You don't have to go all the way just a little bit. Come on now. Just take that can of beer and tell that high school student. He's been having to stand against pressure. All of his friends have said, oh, come on, we had a party. This is a beer party. What do you mean you won't take a can of beer? And that flesh inside will say, just one. Or just take a drink of it. You know, show them that you are a sport. Come on, just a little bit. And if you compromise it, it won't let you forget you compromise because the next times the deceitful us will push you to compromise more. And once you break past the barrier, very difficult. I minister to lots of young ladies in my office. I'm a pediatrician. I see lots of young ladies in high school who have been seduced by the television set, who have been seduced by the morals of the world. Most to them, unfortunately, are unsaved. They don't really know Jesus Christ. Lots of them are church-going people, but the devil has blinded their eyes. And some of them are in the 10th or 11th grade, and they are on their fourth boyfriend. You know, they say, and they are told by their high school counselors, you shouldn't do that, didn't do sex, until you can be responsible well, all of you know that a 12-year-old child feels that he is responsible, that he can make a responsible decision. And they said, I didn't know it was going to be this way. She's, you know, I can't really stop. Already the spirit of whoredom has grabbed them. And they thought that they were making a, that this was, in a, this was a meaningful relationship. And they fell from grace. And, of course, what they didn't realize was that their relationship with their boyfriend stops at that point. It never develops any further than getting them into bed. But they, oh, God. And they wind up with a spirit of whoredom. They wind up jumping in and out of bed. They wind up diseased. And they don't know how to stop. And they don't really understand what happened to them. But television tells them it's Okay. Most of their parents are so into the world that they're over want me to put them on birth control pills just so they, God, they won't get pregnant. And I agree with them because I sure don't want them to get an abortion. And I think it's so. I send them to the, my 
My partner, who's a female pediatrician, and she puts them on birth control and takes care of their bottom half. And I just weep for them. But they have compromised. Praise you, Lord. Their principles. And I say Christian children, this happens to too. So this flesh is deceitful. It'll lie to you. It'll mislead you. Praise God. Where was I? Verse 13. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as weapons of righteousness to God. Says, don't, and you see, in the 13th verse, a choice is implied. It says you have a choice. Jesus died to make the body of sin inoperative so that you have a choice. You can now choose that you don't have to serve the deceitful lust of the flesh. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under law, but under grace. And then verse 15 is a question. And it is posed as an Orthodox Jew asking of Paul a question. What's, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? And Paul's answer is, God forbid. Don't you know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether sin to death or obedience to righteousness? As I said, these young ladies, they are slaves to whoredom. I have young kids that are 16 and 17 years old that are slaves to alcohol. And they started when they went at 7th grade, 6th grade. That's when they started. And they started doing it because they saw their parents doing it. Their friends did it. They were bored. and nothing to do. Both parents are out working so they can have two cars and a big house. And they have country club membership. The kids are at home in the afternoon. They're bored. Both parents are gone. Parents both drink, so they get home, they have a drink to, quote, relax, to unwind. Seventh grade, by the time he's in the twelfth, by the eleventh grade, he's an alcoholic. Praise God. They're slaves. Seventeen. But God be thanked that through the, that though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Oh, God saved you when you obeyed that form of doctrine. When you turned to Jesus Christ and accepted His death, accepted Him as your Savior, your Redeemer, your Healer, and your coming King. You accepted Him. He set you free. Rendered the body of sin inoperative that you might have the freedom to make a choice. Praise you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord God. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Just as you presented your members as slaves of unrighteousness and of, of lawlessness, leading to you more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then? in the things which you are now ashamed of the end of which is death? What kind of fruit did you have when you were an unbeliever? What kind of fruit did you have? You had death, disease, illness, fear, and frustration, which led to death. Things that happened to you that you weren't proud of. Fruit that you bore in your life. Verse 22, But now, having been set free from sin, Having become slaves of God, you have fruit to wholeness and in the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so, here we find that we have a choice. What Romans 6 says, that Jesus died to set us free from the bondage of the body of sin that we can now choose to serve God 
We can reckon sin dead in our lives, the principle of sin, and we can choose to turn from that. Now let's look at chapter 8. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the spirit, to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This word condemnation is an interesting word. It has two meanings in Greek. It depends on whether or not you're in the legal system or the accounting system. In the legal system, it means condemnation. In the accounting system, it means handicap. It means a handicap. Read it now. There is thou no handicap to those who work in Christ, who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You are not handicapped by being in bondage to the body of sin anymore. You don't have that handicap that the heathen have. You have freedom, and you aren't condemned. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And we've spoken of that. For what the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You can fulfill the righteous requirement of the law if you walk in the Spirit. What is the righteous requirement of the law? Galatians 5.14 For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Look at Romans 13.10. It's a companion verse. 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false wit, you shall not covet. If there's any other commandment, are they all summed up, namely saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself? Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Praise God. We can do in the Spirit what we are unable to do in the flesh because Jesus Christ has set us free. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God and not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, what does all this mean, Bill? What does all this mean? Well, I want you to turn your Bibles to Galatians and let's look at the works of the flesh and the works of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. See, you get to, you get to make a choice. You look at this, the works of the flesh are evident. The adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, officiousness, which means sin in every direction, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelous, and the like. Those are the works of the flesh. And those are the things that you were permanently plugged into before Jesus Christ unplugged it. See the plug there? Jesus Christ unplugged that. The body of sin had plugged it in and was holding it in. Jesus unplugged it for you. Now you've got a choice. You can actually choose what you're going to do. Are you going to plug into the flesh? Are you going to plug into the Spirit? And the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When a situation arises in your life, you have a decision that you're going to make. How are you going to react? Are you going to plug into the flesh? Are you going to take that plug and stick it in the flesh? Or are you going to put it in the Spirit? Some of us... Now, if you notice that list there on uh, the flesh, we cast out a lot of demons by those names. Look at them. But you can't cast the flesh out of anybody. You know, we could cast the flesh out. Brother Glenn, I'd never have to work again. <laughs> you can't cast the flesh out. You must crucify it. You can't crucify demons. You've got to cast them out. The flesh you have to stand against. 
Paul had something in addition to that. He had a thorn in the flesh. He had something additional that he pleaded God to take away from him. And theologians have argued for 2,000 years what it was. I don't know. But I know it was something that buffeted him. God said, my grace is sufficient. I tell you, his grace is sufficient to carry you through the flesh. Remember, these are deceitful things. They are deceitful. They will seduce you. But you must make the decision each time. And it's a conscious or unconscious decision. How do you walk in the flesh? How do you walk in the Spirit? You walk in the Spirit by deciding that you're going to react. I remember I had a... a I was trying to buy a couple of used vehicles from a school I was working for. They were buying new vans, and I had decided that I would buy the two old 12-passenger vans that they had, and they agreed to sell them to me at whatever the, the uh, car dealer was going to pay them on trade, which would be the wholesale price, the Blue Book wholesale price, and I was going to buy them and donate them to my church. Well, actually, I wanted to use one of them and donate the other one to the church. And uh, I talked to my friend uh, who was in charge of it. And he, oh, yes, he agreed. And he had delegated it to another man who hated my intestines. And he conveniently forgot that I was supposed to get these vehicles, and he traded them in. And I got out there, and I found, and I got in the flesh. I got very upset. And the thing that upset me the most was my friend sat there and looked at me and said, "You didn't. I didn't know you wanted those. And I talked to him about a half dozen times, you know. He just sat there and I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't know. If he said, Bill, we made a mistake, I'd said, fine. Let's see if we can undo it. But he lied to protect himself. <laughs> and I got angry. I got, I rose up in righteous indignation, you know. And... And I talked to the president of the school, and he said, Bill, we'll try to undo it. I'll call out there and talk to him myself. And I got in my car, and all the way back at the church, boy, I was, I was cursing them, and I was going to get revenge on them, and I was going to fix them. And I got to the church, and God spoke to me. And I was going to prayer meeting, in case you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go in and ask my, and confess this terrible sin that I had been in the flesh. And threaten and put and curse these people and ask God to punish them. Oh, that's terrible! But God set me free from it. But that's the flesh. And sometimes you can feel very righteous in the flesh. I did. I felt very righteous. And when I got to the church and the pastor met me and said, "What's wrong? You don't look good." <laughs> and I and I started to tell him about it, and then I realized. I said, oh, God, I need prayer. <laughs> Come on in here, let me. <laughs> and so I got down before the group, and I confessed my sin to them. How, how wide should your confession of your sin be? As wide as your ministry. So I confessed to these group of intercessors that intercede with me, and I asked them to pray for me. God set me free, and he also got the vans for me. <laughs> but uh, so I wanted to... I want you to look at it. Now, sometimes in your life, you will come up against something that you stand against it, and you plug into the Spirit, and you say, I'm not going to get mad about it. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to love those people. And it gnaws at you. And you get a headache. And you go home, and your head hurts. And you get so nervous, you can't stand, you can't, you can't sit straight. And it just upsets you so badly. But your stomach starts to burn. And this goes on for several days. And you pray about it. And nothing, you don't get any relief. I'm going to tell you something. You've got a demon. When you have something in you that won't let you, and you stand, you do a reason, you stand against it reasonably. And it goes on. And it drives you. And it holds you in bondage. And it makes you uncomfortable. Until you do, till you yield, and suddenly you feel better. You've got a demon. Now, you can cast that out. You can cast that out. And that's... Now, as you yield to the flesh, you yield to adultery, first time you might not get a demon. It just depends on the wonder of opportunity. It depends on what kind of familiar spirit you've got. I know that... Uh, 
I had to quit attending the Order of the Arrow initiations because of my Indian heritage, because they had cast some spirits out of me that I picked up there. And it was, uh, I wasn't worshiping Indian spirits or anything, but the rituals were made around reverencing these Indian gods. And I don't know that all these other kids got one. I withdrew from it and recommended the troop withdraw from it, but I wasn't, I was overruled. And they all looked at me like I was sort of silly. But I saw two children come into, into spiritual bondage from it. And they all had Indian heritage. The window of opportunity was open and that thing came in. The same is true of witchcraft. Same is true of fornication. Same is true. Uh, I remember so well. One day I came into the pastor's office and there was a man and his wife, both of whom I'd led to the Lord out of Catholicism, sitting on his couch. They were crying. The pastor asked me to sit down. And their daughter had been in been sexually molested by his brother. Now, their daughter was 10 years old, and she had been continually molested on a daily basis or a weekly basis by this brother who was around 20 years old. But she never cried out, never told the parents, but she told the high school counselor, and the counselor had the man arrested, and they were over getting. And so uh, I sat down. And I looked at the lady, and I said, you were molested when you were a child. And she began to weep, and she said, yes, how did you know? I said, well, I see it on you, and I, you realize, of course, that this curse is passed on to your, to your daughter, and that she also has the demon of incest in her. That is the reason that she has not cried out. She's allowed this thing to go on so long, because this demon is controlling her in this area. Well, we got them all delivered. But she had a, that girl had a window of opportunity. A curse was on her, and the window of opportunity was there, and this demon came in and subjected her into bondage. And she was in a situation that she could not extract herself from. So that basically is, is what I wanted to show you, that you have a choice. Jesus has unplugged you out of the flesh. The body of sin kept you plugged in. Now... When situations arrive in your life, you have to make a decision. Are you going to plug into the flesh or are you going to plug into the spirit? Sometimes, uh, out of habit, you will plug into the spirit, I mean into the flesh, because it's the way you've always done it. But you find yourself doing that, you stop immediately and repent. Ask God's forgiveness and plug into the spirit. And as you do this, as you make this conscious decision time and time again, you will find that instead of automatically plugging into the flesh, you will always plug into the Spirit, except for sometimes extraordinary situations where you feel you've been terribly wrong. <laughs> that you have reason for righteous indignation. You will plug into the flesh, but the Holy Spirit. But when you see these works of the flesh coming out in your life, Know that you've plugged into the Spirit, I mean the flesh. When you, see the, when you see love coming out in your life, you'll know that you're in the Spirit. So, then I want to talk a little bit today about sexual sin. Because in our culture today, you can't get away from it. If you own a television set, you're constantly exposed. You're bombarded with it all the time. You watch the commercials, you're bombarded with the lust of the eye. And you hear it. It comes into the eye gate and into the ear gate. Now remember, that what comes into the eye and the ear goes down into the heart and comes out of your mouth. It comes into your eye, goes down into your heart, comes out of your mouth. Jesus said, out of the fullness of the heart the mouth speaketh. How does it get into your heart? It comes in by your eye gate and by the ear gate. You don't come in through the mouth gate. It goes out through the mouth gate. And so you wonder. You should watch what you hear. Watch what you see. Now, Paul said, I didn't say that you weren't uh, 
to associate with sexually immoral people in the world because if you did, you'd have to withdraw from the world. But I said you ought to sexually to associate with brothers who say people who say they're brothers and they're sexually immoral. You cannot completely divorce yourself from it. But you don't have to sit and watch it hour after hour. Because as you watch it and watch it, it'll go down into your heart. And your heart will be full of it. Praise God. As you read the Word of God, it goes into your heart. David said, I have stored you, O oh Lord, I have stored your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, how did he store it? He read it. He recited it. He read it. He learned it. And then he let it come back out. You know, fornication is a word you see often in the King James Bible. And fornication comes from the Greek word porneo. And that means sexual immorality. It's commonly called sexual immorality in the New, in the, in the new uh, International. But it, uh, it means... Uh, hmm. It's a word from what we get from that we get our word uh, pornography from. Now, if you want to know what porneo means, think about pornography from the most base thing you can all the way through to Playboy. You, it starts over here at the beer commercials that you see these nice, skinny, red young ladies holding a can of beer, and it insinuates if you drink beer, you'll get one of those. I've never seen one come in a case though. But uh, all the way over to the most base type of pornography. That's porneo. Paul says flee from that. But fornication. Now, fornic that's the word fornication in the King James. Fornication in Webster's Dictionary says voluntary sexual intercourse between unmarried men and women. Adultery. That's a voluntary sexual intercourse between a married man and a woman other than his wife or a married woman and a man other than a husband. All fornication is not adultery, but all adultery is fornication. And both are sexually immoral. Open your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians 6.13. Now the body is not, it's the last part of the verse, now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Look down at 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. You know, if you look at uh, chapter, let's look at chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him whose temple you are. You really don't have a right to do with your body as you see fit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus bought and paid for your body. Now you see this in 1 Corinthians 7.23 when it says, You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. Or if you look at 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, it says you were not redeemed with corruptible gold or silver, but with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish. That's paraphrased. And so you don't have a right to do with your body as you see fit. It's God's body. Lots of people say that I have a right to do with my body, own body as I see fit. No, you don't. If you're a Christian, you don't own your body. Jesus owns your body. And he says, it's my temple, and don't defile it. Conversely, if it is his temple and his body, he's responsible for the maintenance. And if you don't defile the body, you have a a right to properly expect that the landlord would maintain it in good repair. And so your healing is in Jesus Christ. And it is something that you should expect. The landlord would maintain the temple if you don't defile it. But don't make any mistake about how God feels about sex outside of marriage. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor coveters, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extorters will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were made holy, 
You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. And such were some of us. Oh, thank you, Lord, for redeeming us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. Let's look at uh, Revelation 21.8. Revelation 21.7 says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Thank you, Lord. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all lies will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. And if you look on the, uh, on the opposite page, in Revelation 22:15, and they're talking about the New Jerusalem. It says, outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, and murders and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices a lie. God's pretty straightforward about sexual immorality. He says that you're not supposed to do that. Now, a careful reading of Proverbs shows that in sexual immorality there is a transfer of soul matter or a dispersion of your soul. Let's look at Proverbs 6, 6.32. It says, Whosoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. Hmm. The word nephosh can be translated either life or soul. Look at Proverbs 7, 1 to 17. And you can read this whole thing, but this is about a young lady, a harlot, who entices a young man into her home. Starting at 17, she said, I perfume my bed with olum, with, with myrrh and olives and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love for morning. Let us delight ourselves in love. For well, my husband is not at home. He's going on a long journey, taking a bag of money with him. And he will come home at the appointed hour. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. With her flattering lips, she seduced him. Immediately he went after her as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till an arrow struck his liver. As a bird hastens to the snare, he did not know it would take his soul. That word there is nephosh, his soul. So when you are involved in, in sexual immorality, soul matter is dispersed. And you have ties. You have soul ties. You form soul ties to people. I ministered once to a man who had a spirit of a whoremongering spirit. And I told him he needed, and he was having trouble. And I told him that he should release all these people. So he went up and he came down the next day with a lush, long list of people. I said 40 names. I'm not really sure there was that many on it, but it was a long list. And we broke soul ties for every one of those people. I remember in my home church, the pastor's wife brought a lady to me who had been saved about three or four weeks, but she could not come out of an adulterous relationship that she had been in for several years. And this was with a married man, and he would call her on the phone and tell her, I want you to come over. And she could not not go over. Although she tried very hard, she could not not go over. And she said something compelled her, drew her. And until she went over, and the, uh, we went in the prayer room, went it with oil, and we broke the soul ties. Got to renounce the ungodly soul ties. Broke them and released the man to Jesus. She saw me the next day. And said, you know, he called me last night and he said, you make me so sick, I don't ever want to see you again. And she was just rejoicing. <laughs> but soul ties are real. Soul ties also occur between parents and their children. If the child has been unduly dominated by the parents. You see them a great deal with anyone who dominates or controls you. You see them with psychiatrists. You see them with counselors. And the correct medical term is called dependence. You get somebody going to the psychiatrist, he develops a, de quote, dependence on the psychiatrist, and he can't stop. He can't make any decision. He's got to go back once a week, and, he, and, and for long, the psychiatrist's got a full practice. He's got 
8 or 10 or 15 people come in every day that are dependent on him that can't quit. Can't quit. And uh, his practice is full. And eventually some of them will wean down to once a month, but then uh, somebody out there who's had some problems will come back for a retread and they'll get dependent and, and so forth. But these are soul ties, and they need to be broken. If anybody's ever hypnotized you, you need to have the soul tie broken. If anybody's ever unduly dominated you, hypnotized you, had sexual relations with you, or you've idolized them and thought about it, dreamed about it, undressed them in your mind, thought about it, you need to break the soul tie because they, you're tied to them in the spirit. And you need to release them because they're tied to you. And you need to release them. You need to let them go in the name of Jesus. You know, sexual morality will also bring you back under the curse of the law. All the curses in Deuteronomy will fall upon you. Let's look at, uh, let's look at Acts 15. Yeah, this is a great meeting in Jerusalem. Barnabas and, and Paul went down because some men had come up from James saying the Gentiles had to be circumcised else they couldn't be saved and obey the law of Moses. Animal sacrifices and all. And so they all met and they talked. And then James, who was a great Judaizer, who was a great believer in the law, got the word of knowledge. And it starts on verse 16, and it runs through verse 17. Let's start reading at verse 18. N Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from the Gentiles who are turning to God, that we should write them that they should stain from things polluted by idols, from idolatry, from sexual immorality. And here he uses a little different word, a different form of porneo, which also includes idolatry. Not only is it sexual, from things strangled and from blood. Those things will bring you right back up under the curse of the law. Every curse listed in Deuteronomy 28 will come on you. Praise your name. Now, you must realize how God views sexual immorality outside of marriage. He views it as an act of worship to Satan. That's the reason it's called idolatry. It's in rebellion, it's rebellion, and it's an act of worship to Satan. Now that's the way that's the way he showed it to me, and that's the way he showed it to Gene to Gene and Earlene Moody. We both got it independently, and we both agree on it. God feels that in sexual immorality was always associated with idolatry in the Old Testament. If you find that all of the religions that Satan set up, you know, he said anybody that worships an idol worships demons. And all of those religions had temple prostitutes. Fornication was a was a was a, was part and partial of the worship service, and it still is in Satanism. It's part and partial. Leviticus 18 forbids incest and homosexuality and other sins. Praise your name. The uh, bastard is the bastard curse runs ten generations, and the uh, incest curse runs ten generations. Incest. You know how many how many people are involved in ten generations? If you figure it out, I think it's a hundred and it's a thousand and twenty-seven, or a thousand and twenty-eight. An even number. It has to be an even number. But it's over a thousand people. Have you got any idea what your thousand direct ancestors were doing 400 years ago? What your blood kin were doing 400 years ago? I don't. Know. I know they were in idolatry. I know they were down in uh, in Mississippi in an Indian tribe. I know that they were in in Germany in the Black Forest. Praise the Lord. So today we're going to uh, ask God to deliver us. I'm going to lead you in a renunciation prayer, and then we're going to break the soul ties. If any of you have unforgiveness against anyone, you need to forgive them, because unforgiveness will block. So let's, everybody, 
Just stand up and take a deep breath and lift up your hands. Praise your Lord God. In the name of Jesus. And just stand up and praise Him a little bit. Praise your Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Lord, thank you for the reading of your word, Lord God. Thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, you said you sent your word and you healed us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for it. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord, you came to set the captives free, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Set us free, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And so everybody sit down and put both feet on the floor. As I said, spirits, demons are spirits. Spirits of breath, and they generally come out of the breathing passages. I'm going to lead you in a, in a renunciation prayer. And we'll, we'll break some curses, and I'll call out some demons. I don't want you to pray in tongues now while I'm, while I'm calling out the demons. I want you to listen to what I say and come against that demon in your life. If you don't have it, it won't hurt you. But if you got it, it's going to manifest. It may manifest as a cough or a yawn or a scream or feel like something coming out of your throat. But let it go. Don't worry about your dignity. If you can get your dignity back, let your demons go. Praise you, Lord God. And don't worry about what's happening to people around you. Put your eyes on Jesus, for He is your deliverer. Say, Dear Lord, with honesty of heart, humility of soul, conviction of spirit, do I make the following confession? I've sinned against you and disobeyed your word, whether it be through willfulness, ignorance, or curiosity. I now repent of these sins. And ask you to forgive me through the blood of Jesus Christ. But by my will, and in the name of Jesus, I close all doors which I have opened to Satan. And I now ask you, dear Lord, to help me renounce all these things and cleanse me in body and soul, in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, I confess I've committed sexual sins. I do repent and ask forgiveness. I co- confess I have committed the following. You know, you can quietly, under your breath, you can name those things that you remember that you have not brought up before the blood of Jesus before. And claim cleansing by the blood of Jesus. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I do accept your forgiveness and cleansing According to your word. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior. I notify you. I'm reclaiming all these areas. I previously yield to you. I now close these doors forever. Specifically. I claim freedom from sexual sin and lust. I bind you, Satan, and all your hosts, and command you to leave me now in the name of Jesus. Satan, serve you notice. Praise you. You have no legal rights to me by the blood of Jesus. Lord, I have another confession to make. I have not loved. 
but I resented certain people. I confess this is sin. I call upon you, Lord, to help me forgive them. I now forgive. We'll pause here for a few minutes while everybody puts names in. The Lord brings to mind. Persons either living or dead who have hurt or disappointed you. Just forgive them now. Myself. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. You redeemed me by your blood. I belong to you. I want to live for you. I renounce all my sins. I come to you now as my deliverer, claiming Joel 2.32. Anyone calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now let's just write for me. Satan, I just serve you notice now. I stand here. And I come from the power of the third heaven. I stand at the foot of the throne of God, and I come from the power of the third heaven. And I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not interfere. You shall not interfere. I bind all in the fear and spirits. I ask the Lord to send the angels to gather up these spirits and to hush them off wherever he wants them. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Now, you spirits, of, you spirits of rejection in the name of Jesus. Rejection. Turn God's people loose. Rejection. Rejection and fear, ego and vanity in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. All you rejection spirits in the name of Jesus. These are God's people. you got no right to them. All you spirits of hurt and rejection in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of hurt and rejection in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus Christ. All you spirits of rejection and hurt in the name of Jesus. You turn God's people loose. You've got no right to them. You can't make them feel unwanted and unloved anymore. You can't hurt these people anymore in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All spirits of fear and insecurity, all spirits of worry, worry in the name of Jesus, and inconsent, insecurity in the name of Jesus, and anxiety and neuroses in the name of Jesus. We bind all of you. We bind fear. Fear of being wrong. Fear of not being loved. Fear of being, of being hurt. Fear of being left out. Fear of being rejected. Fear of being poor. Fear of being hungry. Fear of being hurt. Fear of dying. I'll bind all of you in the name of Jesus. All you fear spirits, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All fear spirits, turn, turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind you in the name of Jesus. All lust, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. All lust, the lust for things, lust for things in the name of Jesus, lust for sex in the name of Jesus, lust, all sexual lust, lust of the eye, all sexual lust in the name of Jesus, all greed, the lust of the, for the things of this world, all greed in the name of Jesus, spirit of greed, we bind you, we bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Covetousness in the name of Jesus. We bind greed and covetousness and jealousy and anger and rage in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. All of you, turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. Come out. Come on out in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, they've been set free. They've been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. They've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Turn them loose now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. All soul ties. I break all soul ties in the name of Jesus. I break all the soul ties in the name of Jesus. All soul ties. Praise you, Lord God. Soul ties. We break the soul ties to the past. Soul ties to pain. Soul ties to domination. Soul ties to the witch. Soul ties. We break all soul ties in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus Christ. All soul ties. Praise you, Lord God. Satan, don't you know these people have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ? 
They've been justified. That's right. They've been made just as if they'd never sinned. Romans 5, 9 says, How much more we shall be justified. Justified and saved from by His blood and saved from the wrath to come. You can't touch them. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you, by the blood of Jesus Christ, turn these people loose. They've been sanctified. They've been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. We come against witchcraft. 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 Control. Witchcraft control. Witchcraft in the name of Jesus. All you witchcraft spirits. All you Jezebel spirits in the name of Jesus. All you Ahab spirits. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose. Turn God's people loose. In the name of Jesus, we bind you. We bind witchcraft and sorcery. Sorcery. We come against sorcery. We come against the, the tea leaves. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against the Ouija boards. We come against, we come against all the tarot cards, all the sorcery and divination. The spirit of divination, we bind you. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against the spirit of the, the curse of whoredom. We break the curse of whoredom in the name of Jesus. It came down from idolatry. We break the curse of whoredom off of God's people in the name of Jesus. We break whoredom off these people in the name of Jesus. You shall not make these girls whores. You shall not make their, their sons homosexuals in the name of Jesus. We break this curse of whoredom in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall not make them lust after food in the name of Jesus. We bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. We break the curse of the whore in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. We come against fornication in the name of Jesus. We break the curse of oral genital sex in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose now in Jesus' name. Turn them loose. We come against the we come against all the infirmity spirits that came in in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the infirmity spirits. I bind sexual spirits. I bind the spirits of of chlamydia in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose, chlamydia, in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I curse you to your roots. I say, be gone in the name of Jesus. I come against chlamydia in the name of Jesus. Come against gonorrhea and syphilis and AIDS in the name of Jesus. We come against the human papillovirus in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against all sexual diseases in the name of Jesus. We bind you in Jesus' name. We speak healing and restoration to God's people. In the name of Jesus, we come against fear of women. We come against fear of women in the name of Jesus. We come against fear of men in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against the homosexual spirits in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose. Come against the spirit of the lesbian in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of lesbian in the name of Jesus. The man-hating spirits in the name of Jesus. Woman-fearing spirits in the name of Jesus. We bind you all. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. You shall not, you shall not touch God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against all the spirits now. Praise you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, you suffered without the gate, Lord God. You suffered without the gate. Praise you, Lord, that you might sanctify the people with your blood. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you sanctified your people, that these people are sanctified, set apart for God. Thank you, Lord. Touch them now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We praise you and bless you, Lord God. We come against pride now. Come against spiritual pride. Come against spiritual pride in the name of Jesus. Turn, turn God's people loose. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. We come against spiritual pride, self-righteousness. We come against the spirit of the Pharisee. The Pharisee spirit, the self-righteous spirit, the Pentecostal spirit, the Pentecostal self-righteousness, the Pentecostal self-righteousness in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit that says it's all in the blood in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bind you all. We bind you, you religious spirits. We bind self-righteous spirits, Pharisee spirits, ecclesiastical spirits. We bind all the spirits. We bind lying spirits. We find the spirit of the deceiver in the name of Jesus, the seducing spirit, the sedu seducing spirit in the name of Jesus, the lying spirit in the name of Jesus. We bind all the lying spirits in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. The spirit of the seducer, the spirit of the seducer. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Seducing spirits, all you seducing spirits, spirit of the seducer. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. 
all you seducing spirits, all you condemning spirits, spirits of condemnation, spirits of condemnation in the name of Jesus. I bind you, all you spirits of condemnation in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose now. Praise you, Lord God. I come against all you spirits of hatred, all you hate spirits in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of hate, hate men, hate women, hate white folks in the name of Jesus. Come against the spirit of the hatred of the white man in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Come against the fear of the... Praise you, Lord God. Turn them loose. Turn them loose. Come against the spirit. Leadership without compassion. Leadership without compassion. Turn God's people loose. All you spirits of leadership without compassion in the name of Jesus. We bind you in Jesus' name. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Lord, we praise you and we bless you for it, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord, we come against the idolatry spirits now, Lord God. Come against idolatry, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord, we break all the curses of the lodges in the name of Jesus. We come against the Masonic Lodge and the Eastern and the Eastern Star. All these lodges, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We rainbow girls, daughters of the Nile, in the name of Jesus. We bind them, Demolays, all of these. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We break the curses. We break any curses that have come on these people. We break the curses. We loose God's people from the curses in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, praise you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come against the spirit of rebellion now, Lord God, and bitterness. Rebellion, I speak to you. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. I speak to you, rebellion. I say, be gone in the name of Jesus. Rebellion against God. Rebellion against authority. Rebellion against parents. Rebellion against the law. I speak to you, rebellion. Rebellion against duly instituted authority. I speak to you, rebellion. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. You shall not make people lust anymore in the name of Jesus. I come against the lust of the eye now. I come against the lust of the eye. I come against the gluttonous spirits. The spirits of gluttony in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord God. Set God's people free, Lord. I just bind the spirit of gluttony now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I bind the God of the belly. The God of the belly in the name of Jesus. We bind all these spirits in the name of Jesus. We bind the God of the belly. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Come on out, God of the belly. Come on out, God of the belly. We bind you in Jesus' name. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Come against all the spirits of arthritis and cancer, all the infirmity spirits that have come down through the family lines, all you spirits of arthritis and cancer and back aches in the name of Jesus. Come against all the migraine headaches in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, turn God's people loose. All you infirmity spirits, come against stomach ulcers in the name of Jesus. Come against all the stomach ulcers in the name of Jesus Christ. Come against, come against emphysema. Come against lung problems and emphysema and nicotine spirits. Come against bondage, bondage spirits, bondage to the past. Bondage, bondage to the past in the name of Jesus. Bondage to pain, bondage to fear in the name of Jesus. Bondage to alcohol, bondage to rage, bondage to rage, bondage to murder in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against the spirit of incest in the name of Jesus. We bind him in Jesus' name. Turn God's people loose. These are God's people. You've got no right to them in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of incest in the name of Jesus. We bind incest, incest in the name of Jesus. We bind incest in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind 
We bind insanity, the spirit of insanity in the name of Jesus, the spirit of mental illness in the name of Jesus, the spirit of depravity in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind all these spirits. Turn them loose. You can't stay in God's people anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise your name, Lord. Come against witchcraft mind control in the name of Jesus. Mind control, I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you now. I separate you from all other spirits. I isolate you. You can draw no power, no authority from any other spirit in the name of you. You can communicate with no other spirit. I bind you and I command you to come out of God's people in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Come up out of their backbone. Come out of their mind in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. I bind I bind the spirit of amnesia in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the spirit of lassitude and amnesia and slumber in Jesus' name. Turn God's people loose. All you spirits of slumber in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of amnesia in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of forgetfulness in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of witchcraft and sorcery. I come against the candle burners and... In the curse casters in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind all curses on God's people. I say, be gone in the name of Jesus. I send them back from whence they came in the name of Jesus Christ. We praise you and we bless you, Lord God. Touch God's people now, Lord. I come against the spirit of the vagabond in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of the vagabond in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I break the curse of the vagabond in the name of Jesus. I break the curse of poverty, the curse of poverty in the name of Jesus. We break the curse of poverty. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus. Poverty, you old man in rags, I bind you. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Leave God's people now. Leave them in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise your name, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, set them free, Lord God. Set them free of fear now, Lord God. Set them free. I bind the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. Set them free in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we just praise you and bless you and glorify you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise your name. You got anything else? Praise you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord, let your, let your healing balm come down now, Lord God. Everybody hold up their hands. Praise you, Lord. Lord, let your healing balm come down now, Lord God. Oh, God, is there no balm in Gilead? Lord, let the healing balm come down, Lord. Let your spirit flow now, Lord God. Touch your people, Lord God. Oh, God, touch your people, Lord. Set them free now, Lord. You are our Redeemer, our Healer, Lord God. You are our Savior, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, there is no God besides you, Lord God. You are it, Lord. You are our all in all, Lord God. You are our covenant, Lord God. You are it, Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. We praise and we bless you, Lord God. Touch your people, Lord God. Heal them now, Lord God. Heal them, Lord. Fill them full, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Just fill your people now, Lord God. Fill them, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord, I send forth the war angels now, Lord, to break any containers containing part of their soul, Lord God, that's been stolen, it's been lost during intercourse. It's been stolen by the enemy. It's been placed in containers. I ask you to send forth the war angels and to break up these containers. Lord, I ask you to send out the ministering spirits now to gather up these portions of the soul, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you say you restore our soul. Lord, you restore our soul. It says we live. Lord, it says right here in your word, you lead us beside still waters and green pastures, and you restore our soul. That is in your word, Lord God. That is your word, Lord. Restore them now, Lord God, according to your word, Lord God. Send your word and heal them, Lord God. It said you sent your word and you healed them, Lord. Send your word now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And all God's people said, Amen.
Praise God. Praise you, Lord. Lord, bless the food. Just bless the food, Lord God. Bless those that prepared it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Make it nourishment to our bodies and strengthen us, Lord. Lord, plant this word, Lord God. Satan, I speak to you. You shall not steal this word. You shall not steal it. But it shall bear fruit, 30, 60, 100 fold, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.